What's up, guys? I'm here with Fitzy, Mr. Mechanic himself. We got my RockShock Pike here. We're going to take this bad boy from 150 millimeters to 160 millimeters using this shaft that I bought on the Amazon Prime. Pretty easy process. I don't really know how to do it myself, but Fitzy's going to help me walk through it and we'll get this thing all set up. Let's see what we can do. All right, Fitzy, first things first, because we got to take the wheel off. Next, we're going to take the front brake off, get that out of our way. Problem solved. Next step. You're going to want to flip the lowers up. Next, this is your rebound. That is the rebound knob. So there's a little Allen down here. Three millimeter, all the way out? No. Just loose. Pull it out. Pull it right out. That's your rebound knob, and that opens it up to your Allen bolt down there so we can take the whole thing apart. So next step, we're gonna use this T-handle. We're gonna loosen these two down here, says Fitzy. Just loosen. Just cracked. Cool. Do the next one. Another one over here. Bam. Good. Now, uh, probably give her three or four turns. So now we're going to lower the bike back down. We got a drain bucket. The fluid's going to come out of the bottom of these. So we've got the bolts loosened on the bottom there. The next step, we're actually going to release all the pressure here. So we're just going to take the pressure valve off. Got a sharp pointy object to let the air out. Make sure we don't have any more in there. Boom. Now we're ready to take the lowers off. Now we got a rubber mallet. There it is. Slide those off. That is some dirty oil. As you can tell, I haven't cleaned my shock at all. I have the same fluid for the last year. Don't be like me. Slides right off. Try not to make a mess of Fitzy's garage. So we'll get that out of the way and we'll move on to the next step. Gonna look inside the shaft here and see that it's all cleaned out, good to go. If you ever wonder what the inside of your fork looks like, it's a beautiful thing. We have the lowers all cleaned out here, so we're gonna use some of this slick honey and we're just gonna lube them back up and get them all ready before we move on to the next step here. Yeah. Alright, so this next step, we got the bike lifted back up. We have our compression side here, and then we have our air shaft side here. On the air shaft side, up underneath, you're going to see a C-clip or a snap ring. So, we have a set of snap ring pliers here. There's a snap ring here, and then there's this black plate, and there's a little black square that sits in between that. So what you want to do is take a flat head, push on that black piece, and then twist. So you start from one side, mm -hmm. so you can, you can see that there's a little bit of a gap right here. Yeah. So we'll push, twist, there we go. See how that worked? Yep. Yeah. So now it's under the snap ring. Oh, okay. So that you can actually compress the snap ring gotcha. and pull it out of the groove. 
So you push it up, it'll yep. go up eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, and then you rotate it out of the way. Gotcha. So now we can go, go in with our one finger over the back here, just so it doesn't wrench. One finger doesn't take our back. eyes out. And then, yep. Push down. Now pull out. There we go. I'm a rookie, so it takes a few steps here. But that is the ring that you're trying to get out, and that'll allow us to take the shaft out. So now that we've got that removed. What we're gonna do next? Should be able to pull my shaft out. Look at that. It smells terrible. This is the shaft that we're going to be replacing. So this is the old shaft. And that's the that's the spring that was pushing a little bit gotcha. when we were moving it up and down. Yeah, there's a there's a groove that sits inside mm -hmm. in the lower stanchion and that pushes against it. As you can see, it's just a little longer here. So we're going from 150 to 160. So we've got the old and we've got the new. We're going to take these pieces off here and we're actually going to slide them on the other one, re-lube it up and get ready to put back in. Normally you shouldn't reuse your, your crush washer and replace a lot of things, but I'm a newbie, so we're just going to put it back together and it should be fine. Alright, so what do we do now? Just slide everything from one to another. Gotcha. So we're going to slide this off from the old to the new. I should probably take and this little guy too. Just a little washer up here. Slide this on. Slide this bad boy on. Bam! Give it a little wipe down and then we'll lube it back up. Now we need to re lube some more of this slick honey. Yeah. No, I'm just going to put this all over everything. You want to focus on the two seals. Two seals. One seal here. Nice. All cleaned up, lubed, ready to go to the next step. All right. We've got our new shaft here. Now just slide this back in there. Yep, shove it in there. Yeah. Oh my god. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> It's an emotional experience. So we actually took it out. We're going to put it back in. We want to make sure that the pieces are well pushed together and insert slower this time so there's no air stuck in the shaft there. <laughs> Rookie moves. We're just pressing that piece back in and then we'll put the snap ring back on and be back to where we were. All right. So I shot Fitzy in the eye with the snap ring, so I'll just make sure you're careful with that. Are you alright? <laughs> That's awesome! Fucking amateur! So we learned a valuable lesson about snap rings and eyeballs, kids. Make sure you hold on to the snap ring, because it snaps into your friend's eyes. Do we get So we're gonna put it up, there's that little tab right there. It's hard to see so I'm gonna put my left side of this on the tab. Hopefully, my eyes are closed. Is it in? There we go. Is it in? It's in. So we've got the snap ring in. The left side of it is now sitting on that little tab. Basically, what we'll do is just should be able to just twist it over into the middle. Stuck on that tab. There we go. Snapped it into place. That little square tab is back in the middle there. And she's good to go. Gotcha. Full extension. Perfect. So we've got our shaft back in, upgraded. And now what? We just got to put it back together? Time to slide the lowers on. So yeah, we already pre lubed the lowers around the seal there. It's a little difficult, so slide one in first at an angle. Yep, that one's in, and then you have to work the second one in. Train professional people. Are we good? Are they in? They're in. Slide her up. Uh huh. <laughs> ah, there we go. All right, we flipped the bike upside down. 
Now we're going to add our lubrication. Before you add the lube, you need to make sure that your lowers are actually slightly above the bottom out point okay. so that the fluid can actually be injected into the lowers. You want to make sure that that's not perfect. There we go. And that's a perfect. So now we can't see the bolt hole anymore. Yep. And we're good. Five milliliters of 0W30 to the drive side and 15 milliliters to the non-drive side. Correct. So we have some fancy mobile 0W30 oil. Hashtag mobile, repping it. Then we have an injector here. It shows us our measurements on there. Super. Drive side? Drive side is five. Five. Just right in. Five on that side. And 15 on the other. I feel like Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Boom. Now it's time for the bolts. Fitzy, how do I know the difference between the bolts? The one with the rebound, which is the drive side, is going to have a hole through it, which may be yep. the one no in your left hand. <laughs> okay, and this is my drive side. That's my rebound measurement there, because I'm special. So we're going to have to push this back yeah, down. Compress them all the way so that the threads are exposed. Compressed all the way down. Threads exposed. Hand tight. Hand tight. Bam. And then our other one. Bam. Lasagna. Drive side, it's a little bit more sensitive because it's a hollow bolt. That's why they have such a low torque rating on it. Oh, it's only okay. one point. It's only 1.1 1 .1 newton meters, which is a fifth of what we just did. So you don't want to crush. Yeah. The so threads. you basically just want to tighten it just enough. Back on. Final step. We'll put the rebound knob back on. And this just doesn't have. It doesn't any, matter the orientation. No orientation. While it's upside down, just put the wheel on. Voila! Look at that. So now we're going to replace our air valve. Make sure you have the little press on the top. That should just sit right in there, right? That screw right in. And tight. Bam! Got that back in. Now all we need to do is reinflate the shock. Hopefully it works. Right? <laughs> so we have our shock pump. Standard issue, military shock pump. There we go. Look at that. All set up to 160. Ready to shred some trails. Thanks, guys. <laughs>